Here's a good one for environmentalists. A tech startup is encouraging Alexandria residents to recycle their waste by installing machines that will give them free mobile minutes and supermarket coupons in return for their rubbish. Green Tech, a company specializing in waste management, has launched an initiative to promote recycling in Egypt's coastal city of Alexandria. The project aims to reduce the government's burden of dealing with waste and raise public awareness about environmentally friendly lifestyles. The purpose of the Green Tech Collection Center is to encourage people to rethink the way in which they deal with waste. We've set up this collection center, which is a way to directly engage with the public who can now bring their empty bottles of juice or shampoo or cans or whatever, and we encourage them by giving them a receipt that they can cash for prizes when they collect enough points. The prizes vary from phone credit to children's books. The prizes also include pots and seeds, and Green Tech teaches people how to grow the seeds into plants. A machine inside the collection point compresses the bottles to prepare them for recycling. The lid goes here and the bottle goes there. This machine compresses the bottles to shrink them into the smallest size possible and then they are collected and sent to be recycled. And people are already making the most of turning the trash into something else. Every day after drinking a can or water bottle, instead of throwing it on the street, I throw it in here because they can take it and recycle it. The compression process reduces the cost of transportation because instead of one truck carrying 100 kilograms, it can now carry up to one ton. The initiative also reduces the pressure on using the foreign currency to import the raw materials that Egypt does not produce. Green Tech has to expand across the country by building more collection points. It will teach people how to sort out their waste, the plastic, the metal, for example, from other materials. It is a new culture that I hope we will learn from, and I hope we will change our habits in this area in particular. The company will, in cooperation with the European Union, begin to set up collection points in schools and universities in Alexandra. The company, in cooperation with the European Union, will begin to set up collection points in schools and universities in Alexandra to encourage younger people to adopt eco-friendly habits. With the help of the EU, 41 collection points will be set up at Alexandra educational facilities. Green Tech says it is used to import the machines, but now produces them hoping to build a better future for the next generation of Egyptians. An event designed to highlight Nigeria's vibrant connection to the contemporary art scene in Africa and the rest of the world shows just how much the continent's most populous country has to offer. A dynamic and varied program of exhibitions, specially uh, curated projects and live art performances across different media uh, like painting, photography, sculpture, video, performance and graffiti drew over 5,000 guests. The Art X event held in Lagos early in November shows works from 65 African artists and proved Nigeria's contemporary art scene is more vibrant than it has ever been. The three-day event showcased seasoned as well as up-and-coming artists from Ghana to Senegal and Burkina Faso. There were also debates on the future of African art and where the business is headed. Live performances with artists creating pieces as guests walked around was one of the highlights. Some visitors were even invited to participate. Elements of pop culture were also a key theme at the event. Installations were accompanied by hip-hop and jazz music sets as young artists painted graffiti murals. Organizers say the idea was to bridge the different forms of art. Contemporary art in Nigeria dates back to the 1950s, but top artists, even stylistically modern ones, are often influenced by sacred traditions. Before European colonialists showed up, the many kingdoms and chieftaincies that now make up Nigeria had a proud tradition of art, such as wood or stone sculpture and tie-and-dye fabrics.
Like most art, it was rooted in religion. So when the pious 19th century British dismissed local carvings of gods and deities as idolatrous savagery, it nearly killed Nigeria's art scene. They destroyed hundreds of works, others they cut it off to museums. Now critics say there is a sense of urgency in the way art is growing in Nigeria and taking its place internationally. But artists have a unique task to balance traditional and modern influence. Contemporary art producers in Nigeria have a challenge of trying to figure out what is important about our society, our culture, our way of life, and how they embed that and enshrine that around objects that they create. You know, whether that object be a painting, whether that object be a photograph, whether it be a, a piece of sculpture or it's an animation or it's a piece of video art. Um, I think that is, is um, the largest uh, a challenge for contemporary artists. Africa is still widely viewed in art circles more as a source of fine art for auctions in the developed world rather than a market in itself. Events like ArtX show that that may be changing. A growing number of Nigerian art lovers are hooked to the vibrant scene in the country and the wealthy ones are adding local pieces to their personal collections. ArtX organizers said they welcomed over 5,000 visitors during the three-day event. Seeing uh, the different works that can come out of the country, uh, things that we can showcase through the world, uh, boarding talents, uh, the diversity, uh, the culture, and present in a very good light. You know? so, uh, so I'm definitely very impressed with something like this. Organizers hailed this as the first international art fair for West Africa. They hope it will be followed by more regular similar events. That's Network Africa. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.